Before I begin this video, I want to address the elephant in the room. Yes, my videos are too long. Yes, I'm going to try and work on that. And yes, because of that, this video is going to get split up into multiple parts. So if you wonder why I don't cover all the skills, that would be why. What's up guys, it's Yugi Bros, and today we're going to actually look at uh, all of the skill cards that Speed Duels currently has to offer. And we're going to do so on duelingbook.com slash speed duels. Uh, what's really cool about this is they have a guide as to how to play the game. But they also have all the skills listed since you can't like bring them up in the search engine. So we're going to go through all of these skills. And we're going to determine uh, if any of these needs buffs or nerfs. I, for one, am an advocate of not changing cards because you kind of open Pandora's box. If you change something, then you change a million things and, it, you know, where does it stop? And the problem with a tangible game changing cards is that people then need to get the updated versions. Some players will never know there's updated versions. Uh, it, it, it creates a lot of chaos. But I do think that there are some skills that easily, if they were tweaked just slightly, could be actually playable. And because they're not, they're not. So let's go through these really quickly. Uh, and let's let's figure out which ones need to be changed and which ones need to be left alone. The first one is Aroma Strategy, where you may look at the top card of your deck at any time. Something like this, I mean, we could go through every single skill and be like, all right, let's change it to be a little bit better. But I don't want to do that with everything. So Aroma Strategy to me is one of those, eh, it's whatever. Someday that might be good if we get like something like uh, anything that tampers with the top card of our deck. Uh, but for right now, just leave it be. Bandit says if your life is less than 15, uh, you can activate the skill and take control of a set card your opponent controls in their spawn trap zone. I feel like if you negate this 15 or less, this card's too good. So I guess we just leave it where it's at. Beast of the Phantom says during your main phase, you discard one card, then fusion summon one Chimera, the flying mythical beast from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. And then during your end phase, if Chimera was fusion summoned this turn, you can add a Phantom Beast monster from your grave to your hand. Each of those is once per turn. See, I like that. It's once per turn, not once per duel. A lot of the earlier skills are like those same effects, but once per duel. I think once per duel is not enough. I think once per turn is perfectly fine. And this obviously caters to Chimera, so I think it's perfect where it's at. Beatdown says if you control a level 5 or higher monster, you can activate the skill. All monsters you currently control gain 300 attack for each level 5 or higher monster you control at the end of the turn you flip the skill over um i think that's fine where it's at call the haunted is literally call the haunted uh but you do start the game it doesn't say it here but you do start the game with one less card in your hand i would change that i would not have it start the game with a one less card i understand it takes the place of like a card in your hand that's the point but you always auto start with call but the downside to those minus one card in hand cards is just simply the people that have skills like Twisted Personality is they get their regular starting hand and Twisted Personality, and that card's like solid. So I don't understand the point of the minus one card in hand thing. I would just leave this where it's at, but get rid of the you start with one less card. Catch of the Day is one of many water skills in this game. This one says if you control a legendary fisherman, you can activate Yumi directly from your deck or grave. That skill can only be used once per duel. I don't know about once per duel. Maybe once per turn? I don't know. Maybe that's too good, though, especially if we get a Legendary Ocean. I don't think it would be, but whatever. Once per turn, when Legendary Fish, when you control the shores monster by battle and inflicts damage to your opponent, you can special summon a level 4 lower water from your deck or grave in defense mode. I mean, it's Legendary Fisherman. It caters to him. Sure. It's fine. Cocoon of Ultra Evolution is the first card in here that I would probably nerf. Uh, it's two effects as you tribute an insect from either field equipped with an equip card and if you do special summon an insect from your deck ignoring its summoning conditions also flip this card over and the other skill is you can shuffle an insect from a grave into your deck then draw one card also flip this card over both those skills can be used once per duel uh, it follows literally what cocoon of ultra evolution does as a card but the problem is you can use both skills in the same turn not that you couldn't in regular Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, but I feel like in Speed Duels, that's kind of insane. It should either be you get one or the other skill per duel, and that's it, or uh, you can only use one of these two skills per turn. So if you use this one, you can't use this till next turn and vice versa. But with how powerful this card is, I'm not against it just being you only get this skill or this skill, and you call it a day. 
Destiny Draw, I think, is perfectly fine. I think it just needs to be reworded. This one says if you lose 2,000 or more life points, you can activate this skill during your draw phase, your next draw phase. During your draw phase, you may search your deck for any card, reveal it to your opponent, and add it to your hand instead of drawing if you do flip this card over. Um, I think it should just be reworded. The way it's ruled is that as long as your life points are at least 2,000 lower than when than where you started with them at, basically. The way it's ruled is as long as you lose 2,000 life points, this is kind of hard to depict on a card, but like, let's say you have 3,800 and you take 18, right? You can still use this because you've lost 2,000 total that game. So it, it would just need to be rewarded to something like if you've lost 2,000 or more this game, you can use this effect. And because it's not once per duel, you can then do it again if you lose another 2,000. So let's say you Golden Lady Books, you go back to 2,500 and you lose another 2,000. You get to use this effect again. But even if you only lose it in increments of like 500, but you eventually get to that point where you've lost another 2,000, you can use it again. So by that logic, again, I think it just needs to be reworded so that's better understood. Uh, digging for Gold says activate the skill during your main phase. Once per duel, you can manage three cards from your grave, then draw one card. I mean, it's just not... As a once per duel, that's kind of whatever, you know? Like, you just get a draw effect over here out of Cocoon with the other effect it already gives you. Benching three cards, depending on what you're playing, is kind of a hefty cost uh, just for one card once per duel. If you made this card two or three times per duel, then maybe I could see it being more relevant. Obviously, it'd be a once per turn, thrice per duel type card. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. Dino Destruction says activate the skill during your main phase once per turn. You can choose one level 6 or higher. Dinosaur monster you control this turn. It attacks a defense position monster. Inflict piercing battle damage. Flip this card over at the end of the turn you've activated it. I think this card should just simply be dinosaur monsters you control gain piercing. And while I think that might be insane, I don't think out of the realm of possibility that just makes dino instantly the best deck. Uh, piercing is only relevant if your opponent's putting things in defense mode. So, I think it gives dinosaurs a real fighting skill um, to be actually played more meta-relevant type card, since dinos don't really have anything for that. And uh, I mean, I just I just think piercing in general, just give them all piercing, flat out. That's it. Dinosaur Kingdom. All right, this is the first of many that I'm going to say act as field spells. Uh, this one doesn't mitigate the one minus one card you start with. However, I don't think any single field spell skill should be in play. I think it should be outside the game. Similar to how, like, this would be outside the game. Piercing. Similar to how Twisted Personality is outside the game, you know? Twisted to how Inner Conflict is outside the game. Like, you get that f effect whenever you want. That's the point of skill cards. Skill cards shouldn't just be able to be destroyed by a simple cosmic cyclone or dust tornado, and then you lost your skill. Plus that gets rid of the whole confusion where uh, if a skill is in your grave, can you add it with Magician of Faith? Oh, but you can't Jar of Avarice a skill because it can't go back to your deck because it doesn't have a, a, a back to it technically. Uh, so it, it creates a whole plethora of confusion. Um, it would just fix it in general that all field spell skills, all skills in general, just stay outside the game. They don't need to be put into the game at any point in time. And if they do, they at least, really, if they leave the field, they go back out of the game. Um, I, I think something like this, it, it's just a straight 300 attack defense buff. Just leave it outside the game. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Double Evolution Pill says at the start of your draw phase, instead of drawing a card, you can pay 1,500 life points to activate the skill. Banish a dinosaur monster and a non-dinosaur monster from your hand and or grave. Special summon a level 7 or higher dinosaur monster from your hand or deck. Ignoring its summoning conditions, this skill can only be used once per duel. Why does this have a 1500 life point restriction? You already have to do it at the start of your draw phase. Regular double evolution pill doesn't have either of these requirements, so I don't understand why you're already forced to use it at your draw phase uh, for this effect. Why do you have to pay 1500 life points? You could get rid of one or the other effect and leave it be, uh, but because 4000 life points is all you get in this game, 1500 is kind of steep. So I would just say get rid of this, uh, or get rid of the life point pay and then have it be forced to be at the start of the draw phase. Or if you think it is too good for that reason, uh, get rid of the draw phase part and just have it be you pay 1500 life points to use the skill. Dragon Collar, I think this card is perfectly fine actually. This card was a little overpowered in the beginning of Speed Duels, uh, but it has since kind of like flattened itself out. This is still one of the most easiest skills to use, and Blue Eyes in general is one of the easiest decks to teach new players coming into the game. I think this skill is perfectly fine how it is. 
Ectoplasmic Fortification says once per turn, if you control a zombie monster, you can place one counter on this card. All zombie monsters you control gain 100 attack and lose 100 defense for each counter on this card. Any battle damage you take from battles involving your zombie monster is doubled. I think it's probably really fine. I mean, the double battle damage does really, really suck for only a 100 point gain each turn. Maybe this be changed to 200, 200 for the b double battle damage to be warranted. I mean, you could just get rid of this in general and, you know, zombies just keep gaining 100 attack each turn. That's probably the best way you could look at it. I don't know. I don't think it's overpowered. I don't even think you need the once per turn if you control a zombie monster. I just think once per turn, just add a counter to this card. Anyway. Endless Traps. If you have exactly three traps in your grave, randomly add one trap from your grave to your hand. Randomly shuffle one trap from your grave into your deck. Then randomly banish one trap from your graveyard. You can only use it once per duel. Maybe change it to twice per duel? The fact that you already have to have three traps in your grave means a few turns have definitely gone by. I don't think that's unfair. I think the strongest thing this could be played in is burn, and that's the only time it would become a problem, but I don't think that makes that insane. Final draw says activate this skill during your main phase. Once per turn, during your turn, you may place a counter on this skill. If you have three or more counters when you would draw, you may search your deck for any card, add it to your hand instead. At the end of the turn, you use the skill, lose the duel. Just get rid of this. The fact that you already have to wait three draws to put counters on this to then use this card, just just change it to once per duel. Just say that affects once per duel. Don't, lo don't lose the game. There's so many things that could spotch this that I just feel like ruins this card. I don't think anyone would play it anyway, but just change it to once per duel and don't, don't lose the duel at the end of it. But guys, that concludes this part of this multiple part series. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe as always. Click that notification bell to get all of our latest updates. And uh, hey, if you... Uh, if you have any suggestions or changes that you would make compared to what I did, please let me know down below and uh, let's have a discussion about this, shall we?